He is worthy to be glorified. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy. We give you praise and honor and adoration. Izumaniye kolo modo boniyanse fele shatata zoto tomo komel na maniye sofolo siba na hagadia sope shatema la forebo zemano forebo. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ele. In the morning, our sun shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty. your voices and say unto him holy holy yes lord yes you are holy worship him with us
grant me the unction to deliver your word. Grant everybody under the influence of this service, be it in person, be it online, your spirit of wisdom, revelation, understanding. Put to our remembrance everything we hear. Write your own words, Lord, upon the fleshy part of our hearts. Infusing us the grace to be doers, not just hearers. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and honor and adoration. Thank you. Thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Turn around and welcome one or two persons to church this morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shante de te manto le prudo ya. Ah, ah, ah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Amen. Anytime God wants to do something in your life, he will give you a word. You can write it down. You can memorize it. You can engrave it. But if you don't know what to do with that word, it will never come to pass. When God gives us a word, with that word, we engage the supernatural. If not, you will not see the result of that word. It will not come to pass. Many of us have things God has said to us, written down. And we are sure we heard from heaven. And heaven, very sure, we heard from them. Days has passed. Weeks passed. Months passed. Years has passed. They have not come to pass. At times we get confused. And at times we start doubting, did we hear from God? But anytime we go back unto him and present the same matter, we hear afresh the same thing. We are so convinced, we are so sure. The question is, why is this thing not coming to pass? Every word God gives us is for us to engage in with. Somebody say engage. Somebody say engage. Somebody say engage. Engage God. Engage the supernatural. And there are two ways to do this engagement. Number one, you start acting on that word. Meaning what? Align, align your behavior, your, your everything, your actions with what that word said. Both in thinking and both in behavior. And both in speaking. But number two, you must take that word and go back to God in prayer. Two things. 
You must align yourself physically with the world by your actions, your thinking, your behavior, your everything, your speaking. But number two, you must take that word and go back to God in prayer. But, but, but they will say, what are you saying? God said it already. Why am I returning back to him? Until you return to him with that word, you will not see it come to pass. We're going to use an event in the Bible that God allowed to be recorded so that we will learn the way he operates. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, says God, not because the devil is strong, not because negative forces are strong, not because situations are read against us, but because we don't know what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and most of the times, with whom to do it. Amen? I want to repeat what I said before. For the word that God gave to you concerning a situation to come to pass, there are two things you must do. You must align yourself with that word physically. Meaning what? In thinking. Don't think opposite what he said. In action. Don't act opposite what he said. In speaking. As you're talking. Don't speak opposite what he has said. But number two. You must take that word and engage heaven. Engage the throne of God. In prayer. It came from God. But you must take it back to God. To see it come to pass. Let's use an event in the Bible and clarify this. But you, should, you, you will always remember that every principle that you see God use in the Bible, it runs throughout the whole Bible. So any area you pick, anywhere you see God give a word, you will see this thing I'm talking about come to pass. There are no tools about it. And before God can do something, he must give a word concerning that thing. Yes. He must say it. If he doesn't say it, he will not do it. That you didn't hear it, did not mean he didn't say it. <laughs> Somebody said, I never heard that. It's because he, he, he didn't hear him. Not that he didn't say it. Amen? If you put your head into that realm, you will hear him. Let me give you an example. Like right now here, um, CNN, is broadcasting. Are you with me? He's here now. We're not hearing them. We're not seeing anything. But if you bring a TV now and bring a decoder, maybe DSTV or whatever, and connect them, suddenly we we'll start hearing CNN and start seeing the pictures on the screen. But that does not mean that when we connected was when they started speaking. They've been speaking since. But we didn't connect our device. Your spirit man is a device. When you connect, you download. When you connect, you download. You have the power to switch off your TV. You have the power to turn off your decoder. Meaning what? You also have the power to disconnect your spirit man from hearing God. So he's always speaking. Somebody say he's always speaking. Don't I never say, I must always be hearing. I be hearing. Can I hear a big amen? amen. <laughs> Let's use a very, very, very clear and simple event to understand this. You know, there are different services we do. At times we do prophetic service. At times we do today is a clear gentle teaching service so you will know how to operate god said something to me when i was praying and waiting on him for the service he said there are so many things i've said but very few has manifested he said not i holding them but my people don't know how to trigger them they don't know how to trigger them you can come to a time that God wants to do something in your life and that thing will be hanging because you must trigger it. 
The Bible said that Daniel understood by books that the days of captivity over. But they are still in captivity. They were still in captivity. So he turned to God and stepped into fasting and prayer to engage heaven. Somebody said to engage heaven. Somebody said to engage heaven. Because of that, on the 21st day of his fasting and prayer, Angel Gabriel came to him and said to him, Daniel, from the first day you made mention of your case to heaven, I was sent. But it took me 21 days because the prince of, the, of Persia, of that kingdom of Persia, withstood me one and 20 days, meaning 28 days. That is so interesting to know. That is so encouraging to know. That once you open your mouth and start engaging, they hear you. Are you with me? He said from the first day. Somebody said the first day. Somebody said from the first day. <laughs> uh, you know at times you'll be engaging God and you feel that nobody is hearing you. If you're not careful, you, you begin to get discouraged. Every night I'm praying by 12. Who told you anybody is hearing? Is it not just me in this room? Come up here. Uh -huh. From the first day you opened your mouth to engage heaven, you made contact. And God that we serve, who is not deaf, responded. But you must stand. Because there is always battle against any promise. There is always battle. Whether you like it or not. So in the book of Daniel, it says that from that first day, from that first day, thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. Thy words were heard and I am come for thy words. I am come for thy words. He said, but somehow I got engaged in a battle because of the word given to you. For the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. Why? Because something is about to happen and they don't want it to happen. I was delayed, but you persisted. When there is a delay, stand your ground. Are you with me? He said, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me. Somebody say one, one of. Somebody say one of. So don't, don't behave as if Angel Michael is the only warrior that God has. Not the only one. No. He said just one of the commanders. One of the chief princes. Just one of them. That you see his name being mentioned does not mean he's the only one. I hear people say there are three archangels. I grew up in Christianity hearing that. Michael, Gabriel, and whosoever you are. Now you serve me. Are you with me? But the funny thing that Gabriel, not an archangel, not chief, chief priest, not a chief prince, no. Look at the next verse, verse 14. <laughs> now I'm come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. He said, now I've escaped. Because they held me hostage for 21 days until Michael came, one of the chief princes. If they are of the same order and the same ranking, how can they be able to hold the other one? When they hold you hostage and they send a higher force, you will get released. So don't call Michael Archangel and call Gabriel Archangel. 
If you don't understand something, stop saying it. Say only what you understand and stay away from spiritual problems. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that just by the side. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I hear people also call Lucifer that before he fell he was an archangel. But the Bible said the anointed cherub that cover it. So how do you call a cherub an archangel? They are not in the same order. Amen. So when Daniel engaged heaven for what God said to Jeremiah years ago, heaven shifted down and a messenger came. If you're still with me, sir, I'm here. So he said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Somebody said, I understood by books. Somebody said, I understood by books. So the guy studied and realized that the time is up. Somebody wrote it down. It's very good to write down what God says. Let's go to it. Daniel chapter 9, verse 2. In the first year of the reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of years where of the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet. Jeremiah got the word. Jeremiah wrote the word. Daniel read the letter and understood by books. You can get the word and your child will read the letter. The pastor can get the word and you will read the letter or hear it later in a tape. The word does not expire. If the word expires, then the Bible has expired. But the word ever lives. It. it doesn't die. The number of the years where of the word of the Lord came to prophet Jeremiah that he will accomplish 70 years in the dissolution of Jerusalem. Verse 2, verse 3, please. And I set my face unto the Lord. Somebody say, I set my face, set my face. Unto, the Lord. unto the Lord. To seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. <laughs> so when he understood that, he took that word and went to God in prayer. He added fasting. In those days, they wear sackcloth and put ashes on their head. But we don't do it now. Are you with me? So he took that word and aligned with heaven. Both in action, in thinking, and also in prayer. It was actually one man, Daniel, that prayed them out of captivity. Are you with me? He was the one that stirred heaven to come and bring to him into manifestation what God has told them. One man. Yeah, when you understand this, you will not understand this. That say, I seek for one man that will make up the hedge and stand in the gap between me and the nation that I will not destroy it. If your family is being destroyed, you refuse to stand in the gap. If your business is being destroyed, you refuse to stand in the gap. If your nation is being destroyed, standing in the gap is the answer. Not to somebody say, stand in the gap. Did God say something concerning your child? Stand in the gap. Did God say something concerning your spouse? Stand in the gap. Did God say something concerning your father's house? Stand in the gap. Oh, did the devil say something concerning you, your father's house, or your spouse? Stand in the gap also. For whosoever stands in the gap determines what crosses. If you're still with me, sir, yeah. So Daniel stood up and stepped into the gap. And he took what God said to Jeremiah the prophet. Daniel was not there when Jeremiah got it. 
But he took it. And approached God. And got an answer. You will get answers in Jesus name. Amen. You didn't hear me. I said you will get answers in Jesus name. Amen. <laughs> uh, uh, palafo. Let me take you to the book of Genesis. Labanu fete. Are you in Genesis? Any bondage or any kind of delay or any kind of struggles that have been in your life or in the family you represent be it your direct nuclear family or be it your extended family, today, by the virtue of light that will step into your life, you will shatter that bondage in Jesus' name. Amen. No matter how years, how many years it has been there. When Esau and Jacob had a little issue, you know, this kind of crisis and siblings, that crisis that same siblings normally have. Enan got into a big, bigger problem when Jacob took his source blessing. And Esau said inside his heart, after my father is dead and we bury my father, I will kill him. And the Bible said that that thing he said in his heart was told their mother. Rebecca. The funny thing is, if I say something in my heart, who, who will say it to you? So the person that leaked the confidential file from the heart of Esau happens to be God. Yes. Do you know why he leaked it? Esau took an oath to hand over that blessing when they offered him food. Remember? And God was the witness to that oath. So he came in and told Rebecca, your son said in his heart, where well, nobody can hear it, that he will kill Jacob after your husband dies, their father dies. So the lady told Jacob to leave. So Jacob left the house. To cut a long story short, he landed in the house of Laban. He stayed there 20 years, and Laban dealt with him. 20 years. Then God came and gave him an idea how to make great wealth, and he created wealth. Then Laban became very angry. His sons became very angry. And then God came in the midst of that situation and gave him a word. This is where I start. Verse 3. Genesis chapter 31. I'll read it from Amplified Bible, please. Thank you. And the Lord said to Jacob, return to the land of your fathers and to your people, and I will be with you. Somebody say return. return. To the land of your fathers and to your people. Meaning what? Return to Esau. <laughs> and I will be with you. Return to the land of your fathers. That was the word God gave him. That was the word he took. But where is this guy returning to? Will he even get to that land? Genesis chapter 32. Jump over to the next chapter. After today, every word God gave you you will trigger it into manifestation. Amen. No matter the obstacles you are looking at while you're hearing that word, return to where? Return to where you ran from. And God has not gone to go and kill you. Verse 1. Now pay attention carefully, please. Then Jacob went on his way and God's angel met him. If you stop here, you will tell yourself, Kya! now angels are there, so everything is okay. Seeing the invisible and seeing the immortals does not mean that things will, go, will happen. 
Because even if you don't see them, they're around. You see, you don't see. They're around. Every covenant child has spiritual backing from the throne. But people fail with such backing if they don't know how to put them to work. Are you with me? So he saw them physically. Verse 2. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's army. And he named that place Mahanem, meaning two armies. Jacob's army and God's army. Two armies are functioning. Amen? Then Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, in the land of Seir, to the country of Edom. To tell his brother that he's coming back. Then drop it to verse 6. And the messenger returned to Jacob saying, We came to your brother Esau. And now he's on the way to meet you. And he hired 400 men. They are coming with him. But God told me to go. How come Esau is still angry? How come Esau has hired 400 mercenaries? And in those days, for you to hire 400 men, mercenaries, you must have paid them well. They don't finish doing it first. Then come for you to pay them. Then you give them 30000 <laughs> Only you know why you're laughing. If you're still with me, sir, here. Yeah. And they're arguing. It looks like you guys are like 30000 <laughs> Pay attention. If you're in Nigeria, you understand the tongues. Because it's the spirit of Nigeria that gives the interpretation, not the Holy Ghost. Are you with me now? Mm -hmm. And the messengers returned to Jacob saying, we came to your brother Esau and now he is on the way to meet you. And 400 men are with him. 20 years hatred. 20 years hatred. That didn't go down. When he planned to kill him, he planned to kill him alone. Now he has 400 mercenaries. So he's not coming to kill, he's going to massacre. Enough men to wipe out the household. So that tomorrow nobody will say, I am of Jacob's lineage. He wants to put an end to the blessing. Because he knows that that blessing runs through the genes. So he hired 400 men. That brings me to an important point. That God told you something does not mean that death will not rise against you. That brings me to an important point. That God sent you on a mission does not mean that the devil will not raise up opposition. Labano <laughs> kepalate sapa. Yeah, you will hear about Esau after you. You will hear about the devil after you. But that does not mean that what God said will not come to pass. If you're still with me, say a big amen. amen. Oppositions to me get me excited. Do you know why? The testimony is going to be bad. Oh, the testimony is going to be something else. The stronger the opposition, the more excited I get. Because I know that God will still do what he wants to do in a way that will make everybody to know only him is God. And he rules in the affairs of men. That is a higher form of them men and pay them does not mean that they will do anything. It means that we, they will come and witness the testimony. So that if I cannot tell it well, there are 400 voices that will say it. Somebody say here. You should now know why he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. So that testifiers will be many. So those that will doubt your testimony will hear you from those they believe that they are your enemies. If you will say with me, say a big amen. Don't be too conscious of the enemy. Don't be too conscious of the devil. Be conscious of Jehovah. Somebody's life is shifting. I don't know who. God knows who. The person knows himself or herself. But I've got news for you. I hear a shift in the realm of the spirit. There is a shift in the name of Jesus. I said there is a shift in Jesus' name. Verse 7. 
Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. This is a natural reaction when you hear crazy news. But that does not mean that when fear comes on you, that fear will overthrow you. It depends on what you do after the fear comes. Fear just says Satan is around to overpower you. But you decide if you will be overpowered. Talk to anybody say, I'm human. So when I see things, my flesh will react. My brain will analyze. But my heart it decides. The end result. Can I hear you believe in that man? Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. And he divided the people that were, who were with him and the flocks and the hares and the camels into two groups. Thinking if Esau comes to one group and smiles it, then the other group which is left will escape. Here he was still functioning with the arm of the flesh. You know, a problem will rise. You sit down, use your head and think about it. Hey, hey, hey. You should know that the source of problems are not physical. They come from somewhere. Are you with me? If you're still here, say I hear. But we're not afraid of the source. For we know our God. We are sure of our own source and our sustainer. So we know that after all has been done, after all has been said, we will be the last man standing. If you're still here, say I'm here. <laughs> Uh, after you finish this, verse 9, Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac. <laughs> he said, aligning himself back to the covenant where he came from. Oh. The Lord who said to me, return to your country and to your people and I will do you good. He went back to what God said. Hear me. If God did not tell you anything concerning a matter, don't venture in. Because when the road shakes, when the vehicle of destiny shakes, you need to run back to that thing God said. Are you not the one that said to me, return? Can man prevail against you? Somebody say, I hear. A man whose destiny is anchored on the world can never sink. For the world can never sink. That's why before I do things, I wait until I hear a word concerning it. At times, you, you, you give me a case and you're wanting pressure, and I'll keep quiet. And you're wanting pressure. Pastor, say something, I'll keep quiet. Why? I don't say what I'm not sure of. Until he gives me direction, I will talk. If he doesn't give me, if you want, eh, go and buy pressure pump. <laughs> and pump me. I go, they look you. It doesn't affect me. Never. I've grown in God beyond the pressures of men. It doesn't. I'll just be good like you and be smiling. When you're tired, you calm down. And if God does not tell me anything, I'll not say anything. This microphone will never say anything until I speak. Why? It's dependent on picking my voice and communicating it back to you. The day this microphone decides to release his own voice, he will never enter this stage again. And if they take it to the equipment session and still talking, it will never enter this building. And when they take it to the repairers and it's still talking, they have to break it in pieces, remove the battery, remove it. so they have to kill it so that their voice will cease. For the microphone is not permitted to speak on its own accord. If you stick with me, sir, here. We are God's microphone. Don't be in a hurry to decide a matter. Wait for him to tell you what the matter is all about. If you keep quiet, keep quiet because he knows what he's doing. You can't hurry him. So hurry him and lose the throne. He says somewhere, I waited for you, you didn't come. Try, I forced myself. Oh, I did the sacrifice. So, so I say, no problem. God has also forced Himself and removed the kingdom from your hands. 
Jacob went to call and said, Oh God of my father Abraham, the God of my father Isaac, meaning what? I bring myself in alignment with the covenant you gave us. The Lord who said to me, Return to your country and to your people, and I will do you good. Is it not what you say to me? Verse 10. He now reminded me of some things to show his gratitude. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercy and loving kindness and all the faithfulness which you have shown to me, your servant. To your servant. For with only my staff, I passed over this Jordan long ago and now I have become two companies. When you are approaching God with a new word that he said to you, can you kindly thank him for the one he has done? And remove this stupid thing I see people do. You are approaching God. You are threatening him. If you don't show up, I know what to do. If you don't show up, some people say, if you don't show up, I'll backslide. Backslide now. The Bible said that hell enlarges itself. Accommodation is guaranteed. Go and read your Bible. He said hell enlarges itself. Meaning what? More accommodation. If you want room and parlor, it's there. You want two place, they have it. He approached God based on what he said. Then he switched over and started giving God thanks and praise and honor and adoration based on the journey so far. Hey, there's a journey so far. No matter where you are, there is a journey so far. For in the cemetery, there's no more journey. A living dog is better than a dead lion. At least he can do whoa, whoa. Before you talk about whoa. Dead lions can make nothing, no sound. At times you are so, so full of yourself and, your, and you everything about you that when you approach a room, you forget that the breath in your nostrils, you didn't pay for it. If fellow here charges you like MTN. Even if it's one kobo, per bread. One kobo. One kobo. Even that goatee will not be alive by now. All his kobos must have finished. When you understand medical science, there's something you understand. That every mechanic repairs an engine when they turn it off so that they enter in danger and repair it well. But God put an engine that never turns off. It's called the human heart. And when there's a problem, you contact him, you repair it while he's still beating. You understand that man has no power if you minus God. No wonder the Bible says he opposes things by the word of his power. He says he's the one who did it. By the word of his power. He reminded God of what he said. Immediately he switched and thanked him for the journey so far. Kai, when you touch his heart, he will open up unto you. Then you can go for his hand. Then immediately, from that thanksgiving, from that adoration, from that appreciation, he switched back in verse 11 and said, deliver me. He was delivered as he came for. But he needed to branch and thank him. He, have you spent time thanking God for Johnny so far? You are so angry, you are not getting a job, but there are people that died in school. Hey, somebody kept you alive. Even when you misbehaved. Even when you went to places you know you would have come out alive. He came there and kept you. You are not even born again. You just finished fighting with a preacher yesterday and he protected you today. I am Gahu. The Bible said that if I look around in my life, I will see something that will make me to give him glory. That will see something that will make me to give him thanks. I will see something that will make me to give him praise. If you want to bring it to manifestation, what God is saying, begin to take what he has done before. 
Thank him for the journey so far. Thank him that he kept you alive. Hey! I am Ogahu. It means that I will see something in my life that will make me to give him glory and give him honor and give him adoration. Because he's great and he's wonderful. In Jesus' name. In the height of that, he switched over and said, Deliver me, I pray you. Deliver me, I pray you. Deliver me, I pray you. You can see the order of prayer. He started by aligning himself with the covenant. He used Abraham and Isaac that got the covenant. Today we use Jesus that connected us. Oh, I come in the name of Jesus. I come in the multitude of mercy. I come by the blood of everlasting covenant that gave me access. Capable <laughs> pataka. As it's written of me in the volume of books, I come today. Kaya. You come boldly, know you are entering your daddy's house. You know, some people cannot wake, wake, wake up to pray. Do you know why? You don't know the importance of it. You don't know the power behind it. You don't know that when you pray in the night, you come out in the afternoon and collect the results. Why is it that people in all court do their stuff in the night? Because they need to deal with some people in the afternoon. Ah. <laughs> uh, he said, deliver me, I pray you, from the hand of my brother. From the hand of Esau. <laughs> you told me to return. Look at Esau. I know you knew that Esau will come. Because you're not confused. Because you know all things. Now deliver me, I pray thee. When God told you to return, God did not say anything about Esau. When God told Moses to take the people of, of Israel to the land that flow with Mecca honey, he didn't tell him there will be a sea to cross without a bridge. He didn't tell him there will be Sihon. He didn't tell him there will be battles along the path. And most importantly, he didn't tell him that the promised land they are going to is filled with giants. That we, when they look at, they will say, we are like grasshoppers in our eyes. And then we enter their eyes and look at ourselves. We are also like grasshoppers in their eyes. Hopeless situation. He didn't tell him that. God does not tell you about the problems because he knows that you must come to him. God organized daily prayer so that you will be dependent on him. He doesn't say everything so you must come back to him. Because he knows man. If he tells everything from the one, you disappear. You will disappear. The next time you see, you will be in a swimming pool in the promised land. Be telling me hi, why part to the man upstairs? Dependence. That's why if you stay away from prayer, do you know what, what you're telling God? I'm arrogant. I have pride. I can do it on my own. It's the humble that pray. The arrogant stay away. It's the humble that asks for help. Prayer is help you are asking for. But prayer that does not have appreciation. You will pray at me so. Deliver me, I pray you, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau. For I fear him. These are facts. For your faith to walk, you must look at the facts that the faith used to must work on. He said, For I fear him. Lest he come and smite us all, the mothers with the children. Then he switched over. Hey, Kapala. Study how this man pray and get a result. Verse 12, he switched over. And you said, he's reminding God of what he said again. Because it's about to end. And you said, I will surely do you good. And make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. Meaning what? Esau cannot wipe them away now. Because your word must stay that they will be as the sand of the sea. If Esau kills them, your word will fall. 
He started with what God said. He ended with what God said. Inside, he put in praise and worship and adoration. Below it, he put in his request. Be behind it, at the end, he reminded God of what he said again. Kai. When he said put him to remember, he didn't say come with God. You say put him to remember. You say put him to remember. I come, oh, I come, oh, I shake your throne. I throw you out of the throne. Excuse me? What kind of crazy prayer is that? I lay hands on your throat, I shake it, I shake it, I shake it, I shake I vibrate you, I vibrate you. You can't sleep, oh. Hi. That they say those that make mention of the Lord giving no rest does not mean you come arrogant, you come crazy. You come with utmost respect. For you are approaching a mighty king. You are approaching a monarch. There are protocols to the throne. Didn't you see how the mother of Solomon spoke to David when the brother grabbed the throne without permission? He said, did you not tell your handmaid that my son <laughs> reminded him, and the Bible said they bow her face. You don't speak to the throne anyhow. If you do, the power of that throne will turn against you. So verse 12 again. And you said, somebody said, you said, I will surely do you good and make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. Verse 12, he used this to deal with what is your plan in verse 11. He came to wipe us out, mothers and children. But you say that these children will become like the sand on the seashore. That means what? He cannot succeed. Now arise and prove your word. Arise and let not man prevail against you. Arise and let it not be said that you said something and it did not come to pass. Oh God, arise. Talk to the say, Oh God, arise. Somebody say he prayed. Somebody say he prayed. Somebody say he prayed. Now let me switch switch. There are two kinds of prayer when you're facing this kind of situation. This normal prayer. And what the Bible called wrestling. Here he prayed. And if you stop here, you missed it. Because when he stopped here, he didn't get result. So do you know what he did? Verse 13. He lodged there that night and took from what he had with him as a present for his brother Esau. He sent him presents. It didn't work. Verse 17. He commanded the first wife. <laughs> he, no, he commanded the first let me read verse 17 and read now. He commanded the first. When Esau, my brother, meets you, because he divided them in, in, into three batches, and asked to whom you belong, where you are going, and whose are the animals be, before you, then you shall say, they are, they are your servant Jacob's, not your brother, no, your servant. It is a present sent to my Lord Esau, and moreover, he is behind us coming. He also commanded the second and the third. So, they all went. Then he took his wife and showed them, crossed them over the brook, came back, and he was alone. Verse 24. I'm jumping because of time. Verse 24. And Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until they break. That prayer he prayed before mobilized heaven to come for a wrestling. But he created the opportunity for the wrestling to happen. For if he was with them making noise and going, there is a problem. There must be a time in your life when you must move away and create an atmosphere for a wrestling. Without interruption from anybody. That's why it's very good to wake up in the night and pray. You know, we pray every night by 12 midnight. On Zoom. You can wake up, leave everybody, go somewhere, put on Zoom. Because when you hear people pray, it helps you to pray. A lot of us just know the prayer of verse 9 to verse 12. But I'm introducing you to another kind of prayer. Somebody say wrestle. 
Somebody say wrestle. Somebody say wrestle. Somebody say wrestle. Did you notice in the prayer of the other one we read, they told us there was. When he came to wrestling, they didn't say any word. Because what wrestling is in the Old Testament is what tonguing is in the New Testament. When you wrestle with God, when your spirit engage, your tongue, tongue, it gets to a point. It becomes monotonous. It gets to a point. It enters into groaning. It gets to a point. The most important thing here is that you laid hold on the supernatural with the hands of faith and refuse to let go. Nobody can say exactly what you say. For he said he wrestled with him. He wrestled with him. He wrestled with him all night till daybreak. And when the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, it was, it was now daybreak. He touched the hollow of his thigh. And Jacob's thigh was pulled out of joint as he wrestled with him. He touched the hollow. Meaning what? He dislocated his hip bone. He dislocated his hip bone. Expecting him to feel so much pain that he will let go. The man refused to let go. Hey, when you enter wrestling, no matter what happens, refuse to be distracted. He was in pain, but he held on. He was in, if they dislocate your hip bone, you know how you will feel. But he held on. When he held on, after such pain, he held on. Then he said to him, let me go, for the day is breaking. Now they are speaking English. The one who can understand. And Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you declare a blessing upon me. That means what? It dawned on Jacob, if I let this being go, he so will kill us tomorrow. It dawned on Jacob, all the presents I sent, they are rubbish. It dawned on Jacob, all my calculations, they are rubbish. It dawned on Jacob, if I don't prevail with the invisible now, I will not prevail with the man tomorrow. It dawned on Jacob, the battles are fought in a room and victories collected in the open. It dawned on Jacob. It is now that I must bring it to manifestation what I want to see as a testimony. If you are weak spiritually because you are somehow lazy, I'm not causing you about telling you the truth. When you wake up to pray, you just turn, 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 say hinga, hinga, patatu, then you sleep. That's not wrestling. No, no that's not wrestling. He spoke from verse 9 down. Then he moved everybody and entered the wrestling. <laughs> Set everybody away. <clears throat> he said, I will not let you go. Unless you declare a blessing upon me. When he was speaking in English, he said, my brother Esau is coming to kill you. Now he said, declare a blessing. Why? He knows that the supernatural empowerment that comes from declaration from the immortal is enough to solve the physical problem. He knows that. He remember the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and those that dwell in it, including Esau. Those that dwell in it. The Bible said that the heart of kings are in the hand of the Lord as the water moveth in his path. He will turn it in the direction he wants. That means that Elohim has unusual power. And he can cause men that hate you to look at you and approve. I've heard men say, I don't like you, but I don't know why I'm doing this. Let me just approve this. Keep on not liking me as far as you keep on approving. Are you with me? Verse 27. The man asked him, what is your name? And in shock of realization, whispering, he said, Jacob, supplanter, schemer, trickster, swindler. Then the man said, your name shall be called no more Jacob, supplanter, swindler, trickster, schemer, but Israel, meaning what? Contender with God. Hi. There's a spiritual name you must bear for you to see result. It's called what? Contender with God. It's not, a, it's not about somebody calling you Israel or writing that you're not Mr. Israel. It's you standing in a position where you become a contender with God. He said, your name shall be called contender with God. For you have contended and have power with God this night and with men and you have prevailed. That means what? When he was wrestling with God and refused to let go, 
when he was able to hold his ground, even in spite of the pain inflicted upon him, he said to him, you contended with God and you prevailed. That means what? Man, you have also prevailed. Man must bow before you when you are able to stand strong before God. If you refuse to let go, man must shift their ground. Pastor, I don't know what's wrong with my husband. It's as if the devil entered his head. Yes, the devil entered his head, but God should enter your own head. If you're able to contend with God, the devil that entered his head will leave him. I don't know who, said who I'm talking to, but who said I'm talking to? Hear you, the word of the Lord. You are fighting physically. He's not going to solve the problem. He can only worsen the problem. But if you contend, something will happen. Somebody say contend. Somebody say contend. Verse 29. Then Jacob asked him, Tell me, I pray you. In contrast, what is your name? What is your name? Tell me, I pray you, what is your name? But he said, What is it that you ask my name? The angel of the Lord declared a blessing on Jacob there. And Jacob named that place what? Someone say Peniel. Why? The face of God. That's the meaning. He said, For I have seen God face to face, and my life is spared and not snatched away. Penia, the face of God. So, remember we're in the second half of the year, and God told us that this next six months, and the first one is already ending. He said it's going to be the next six months of supernatural dominion. That means that one of the causes of supernatural dominion is seeing the face of God. We wrestle until you see his face. <laughs> Verse 31. And as he passed Peniel, the sun rose upon him and he was limping because of his thigh that was pulled out. So he came out limping. Thought Peniel would say, you can be a hero but with a limp. Don't bother about the limb. Enjoy the testimony. For there's a prize for every glory. Jesus has his own limb. Yes, the holes in his hands. That's the way you know the spirit that appeared to you. If any spirit appears to you and he's shining like light and shining like Jesus, the son of light, the son of the morning, nya, 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 he said, bow, say to him, show me your palms. Satan cannot duplicate that. When he shows you the palm, look, you will see a hole that four of your fingers can pass through. Not a pin hole, not your nail hole. What they used to crucify him was not a nail, it was a peg. You will see the hole where, if you do your fingers like this, they can pass in. Because no matter what he wears, he doesn't wear gloves. He doesn't wear gloves. So I can't see his side. Forget the side. Show me your palms. My God doesn't wear gloves. Are you with me? Tom Telebo said, stir up your prayer life. And your thanksgiving life. Because there are so many things to see. Jump into manifestation. Can I hear a believing amen? There's always a limp. What was the result? Chapter 33, verse 1. And Jacob raised up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau was coming with him, 400 men. So he divided the children to Leah and to Rachel and to the two mates. Verse 4. But Esau ran to meet him, embraced him, fell on his neck, and kissed him, and they wept. Somebody send the next morning. One night, one night, one night, the next morning. If you do it every night, it will be the next morning. One night. Anything that is holding any area of your life is there because you accommodated it. You are squatting somebody.
Anything you need to hear from God and move ahead and all because you are the one. When we are looking for church land and stuff like that, and then, so one day, one time I was passing, I went to God, I said, you told me to do this, you told me this. You have not shown me the land. He said to me, direct, you are the problem. You are the one delaying it. And I was coming for the Tuesday service. So I told him, I'll be back. Let's go and preach. So I came here, and my, as my, my cost of ease, I thought to the pastor that was sitting in the house, and I said, said to the ones beside me that day, I said, I asked God about this. So he said, I'm, I'm the problem. And they looked at me. I said, let me finish preaching. I'll get back and get details of the issue I'm having. Say, you are the problem. So when I got back, I switched to his presence, switched to his presence. I'll show you how to end that. I said, you know what I mean? Yes. You went around looking in the place you like. You didn't ask me. Yes. And there was one line that I saw, I really liked. And I was after it. I said, sorry, I'm very sorry. And I asked him, immediately, a land I prophesied over 15 years ago flashed across my eyes. So I gave him reason that 15 years ago I prophesied over that land. And they told me this, this, this. So it's impossible. He flashed a second time. I got up, carried my phone, called somebody I know around here, and said, This place. Yes, sir. It's so, it's so, for sale. And somebody has already come to buy. I said, eh? I said, That person can never buy it. He said, no, he has gone, the negotiation has, this one has, he has paid bush shelter. I said, I don't understand. God showed me something. And the rest was his thing. I said, I will wait. When he gives up, and they give up, they will call me. Give God praise. These things work. I told him, I won't come there to come and When he gives up, and they will give up. They will just tell them there's somebody waiting. And when they call me and say, it's no longer working, I say, let me give you an extra one month so that tomorrow he will not say that I took his land. And after, they called me again. Then the guy came to me and said, Pastor, the day you made mention of that thing, I was angry with you because I'm among the people that are supposed to share the money because my family is also involved. So when you told me it's not going to work, I said, look, 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 look at this man. The one that we're waiting for. When you hear from heaven, act on it. He is the one that holds the ultimate power. And from that day, oh, anytime I stand in his presence, I will thank him for it. I started doing architectural drawing, organize the land. Drew a building, put inside it, drew a park up, and never paid go. Why? I told you number one action in alignment, speaking in alignment, thinking in alignment, then prayer. Alignment. Nothing will stop the manifestation. Lift up your voice wherever you are and give him praise. Magnify his holy presence. May the world you hear today anchor in your heart so strong. May it anchor so strong in you. May it become a living way of doing things. May it become a lifestyle. Let it not just end in knowledge. Let it come into full manifestation. There is somebody hearing the sound of my voice. You are going to be weakened by the grace of God. And you are going to begin to function with God. And begin to make decisions in the prayer altar. Just talk to you wherever you are. And if you're not born again and you're hearing the sound of my voice, no matter where you are, you are in this hall in person, you are in the extensions downstairs or in the other extension, or you are online. Wherever you are, wherever you are, just open your mouth and say, Father Lord Jesus, 
I believe you died for me on the cross of Calvary. I accept your life. I accept your death. I accept the sacrifice. I accept that eternal life you've given unto me. I give you myself 100%. I hand you over my life. As I accept your sacrifice for me. All I am, all I have, all I will ever be, I hand over to you. I love you, Lord. You are my personal Lord and Savior today. Oh, thank you, Jesus. For some of you that made this prayer, you can just write, write me an, an inbox message. I will get across to you in Jesus' name. Others, lift up your hands, wherever you are, and talk to him, glorify his name. This week, I ask for unusual power to pray. Unusual power to worship him. Unusual power. Take a cup of the The grace that coming from above. We give you praise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come say to him, You showed me mercy. He showed us mercy. He showed you mercy. Check, 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 check. He kept you alive by mercy. He kept you whole by mercy. You are not in orthopedic. You are not in emergency ward. That is the mercy of God. A living dog is better than a dead lion. Lift up your voice and thank him. Hey, I'm the one you have shown mercy. into every life hearing the sound of my voice may this week bring forth the product of God's mercy bring forth the testimonies of God's mercy bring forth the mighty hand of God's mercy 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Any mountain standing before us, I command it to be thrashed into pieces. Any valley before us, I command it to be filled in Jesus' name. Any human being that goes to a mountain shall be uprooted. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For when God says a word, no man can say no. It's about before God. So shall men bow in Jesus' name. So shall devils run in Jesus' name. Lift up your voices and give him praise wherever you are. This week is a week of supernatural manifestation of the mercies of God. Supernatural manifestation of the glory of God. Supernatural manifestation of the mighty hand of God. You shall hear a news this week. You shall hear a news this week that will make you to laugh, that will make you to dance. In the name of Jesus. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. You shall not see wind. You shall not see rain. But your valley shall be filled with water. In the name of Jesus. You show me mercy. You show me mercy. Wherever you are, bring out your tithe wherever you are. You want to pay your tithe, bring it out. You are online anywhere you are, it doesn't matter. Bring out your offering. If God is laying in your heart to sow a seed, bring it out also. Because at times God will move you to give you a seed based on what you heard. And you notice that grace has stepped into your life. You notice that the world was fired into you. You want to say, Father, I thank you. You can do that. We give you praise, we give you honor. You can use your devices wherever you are. Sete patu fene na patasa. Hey, sapana sapa, gekabana. Like Jacob, we say, <laughs> you showed us mercy, and your mercy cannot expire. Great and mighty things are coming forth. You show Nigeria mercy to this point. We cannot sink now. For your mercy is upon us, Lord. Great and mighty God. Father, we come with our offerings. We also come with our tithes. We also come with our seeds. We say, Lord God Almighty, you showed us mercy. We give you praise and honor and adoration. Thanksgiving from our hearts. We say thanks a million. As we bring a token of appreciation, as we bring our tithes, we bring our seeds unto you. We thank you. We worship you with our substance. For you are a great king. Be that glorified in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. You are sure, man. Remember, we pray every night on Zoom by 12 midnight, 12 to 2. Most times, it's very hard for people to pray alone if you have not mastered the discipline of the art of prayer. You log into our Zoom. Please, you can put on the, this stuff so that people can see. We have only one ID. Only one ID. Amen. We don't change it. We don't change it at all. You use it and log in. 12 midnight. You can sleep earlier. You can also sleep after the prayers.
Amen. Thank you, Father. And that Zoom has a code. R-O-C-V-Y-R-3. R-O-C-V-Y-R-3. Let me tell you what God said to me. He said, there is nothing I say to you that come to pass if you don't bring it back to me. Yes. That way, well, the white Bible says, with prophecy, make what? Make what? Stop writing down what God said and go and sleep. Never you allow the devil or man to prevail against any word of God. Make war with it. And you will see manifestations. Log in into this 12 midnight and join people and pray. You hear all people pray. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. When you wrestle with God, you will come out with dominion. Supernatural dominion is spiritual. It's for those that wrestle. Amen. Lift up your hands and thank Him. I've come to the end of this service, just giving glory, giving honor, giving adoration. Father, we thank you. We give you praise, great and mighty King. We magnify you. Just thank you wherever you are. We come to the end of this service in Jesus' name. Just thank Him. We give you praise and honor. And adoration, we magnify you. Thank you, Father. 